Hey guys, NSC85 back with another video and today what we're going to be doing is talking about castle nut staking and we will be using what I have termed as the fight master method for staking. If you guys aren't familiar, fight master firearms, uh, this guy has been nicknamed the stake master. Uh, he has taken a lot of patience and a lot of his own time to answer all of my questions so I could make this video for you guys. And uh, hopefully you're able to get some results that are similar to mine, or even better, similar to his, because I only get one shot at this, and I highly doubt my stake will look anywhere near as good as his. So let's go ahead and dive in and talk about the fight master method for staking your castle. Okay, so the first very important thing is you want to make sure that your Receiver is nice and sturdy. I have mine in my Geisley reaction block and I'm just gonna go ahead and snug this in right now The second very important thing is the type of punch That you will be using it is called a center punch, but more specifically it is the star it 117 C Derek does sell these on his website. Please feel free to go over there, Fight Master Firearms, and pick one of these up. It is the best center punch that I have found for doing this. Not only that, but he has proven results. So, if we look at our end plate, and we look at our castle nut, the goal here is to drive material from here into this notch, therefore preventing vibration from loosening the castle nut. It's very easy, but to get a stake that's, for lack of a better term, incredibly perfect, <laughs> and one that looks aesthetically pleasing, this method has some specifics. Again, using the Star at 117C punch, we're gonna look at this notch right here and imagine the center line coming out of that because we want most of the material to go right into the center. If we do it too far to one edge, it's just not that strong of a stake. So we wanna make sure we're right in the center. And then depending on the type of material that the end plate is made out of, kind of depends on where you're gonna go for the center line on the end plate. Now this end plate is made by four controls. It's made out of Beskar or something. Uh, it's extremely hard. So if you consider the center line 50%, right? If that's the 50% line, this being 100%, this being 0%, we're gonna go at about 25, 30%. As far as the hammer I'm gonna be using, it is a Grace 8 ounce brass hammer. I don't think the hammer is too important because you just want to make sure that you're able to smack down on the top of the punch accurately. We want to minimize slipping. One way to minimize slipping is to always remember that you're going to be going straight down. Now because this is curved, right? straight down isn't going to be like this everywhere that you are. It'll be straight down here, but if you come here or here, right? That's not straight down, that's coming at an angle. Straight down would be coming at it like this. So you kind of want to eyeball where the center of this notch is on the end plate and go between 20 and 30 percent. Because this one's harder, we're going to go towards the 20%. Place the tip right there. Go straight down in correlation to the radius of the end plate and just give it a slight tap. That slight tap will create a mark. And you can take a look at where that mark is and if it looks like it's where you want your stake to be, That'll kind of give you a spot where it won't slip. Just a real light tap. Now let's say it's not where you want it. That light tap 
assuming it's gonna be nice and close to where you ultimately wanna be, that light tap isn't gonna affect anything because if you move your initiating mark of where you wanna start your stake, this ends up blending in with the rest of the stake. So this one actually looks pretty much exactly where I want it. So I'm going to continue with that stake. And all we're gonna do here is again, in correlation to the radius, we wanna go straight down and just give it some healthy wax. So there's three healthy wax. And that looks pretty good. So we're gonna keep going straight down until we start pushing some material into that castle nut. Something important to note, please learn from my mistakes. This stake looks amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to show you the above shot. However, I did not hold it well enough, and I'm sure you saw in the video, I skipped and ended up pounding it right here. Now, does that matter? No, it doesn't, but it doesn't look that nice. But for the sake of the video, I just want everyone to understand that mistakes do happen. This is okay. And even though it's not incredibly perfect, it'll still work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to pound this one a couple more times and I'll show you the end result. So after you got it deep enough, I typically angle it slightly towards the castle nut just to slightly drive some material that way. And that stake is done. Other than the mistake I made, it's a perfect looking stake. I will zoom in on that so you guys can get a good look. Now for the manual, you are supposed to stake two times. So I will be staking a second time, and hopefully this one, I won't make any mistakes. It'll look a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and show you that process on this one here. Find my center line. Light tap, just to see where it's gonna end up. come over just a touch that looks a little bit better remember in correlation to the curve you can come straight down And that one is complete. As you can see, it's a perfect circle. And this one isn't exactly centered, but it's definitely gonna get the job done. Like I said, Fight Master is the stake master. And this is only about the third one I've done using his method. So mine still don't even look as good as his, but they're still pretty solid stakes. Hopefully this helped you guys. If you have any questions, drop them below, otherwise, Hit up Derek at Fight Master Firearms and he'll be able to answer some questions too. Take care guys. Thanks.